Hi everyone, this is Dr. Candice at Somerset Health and Wellness Center. I'm hanging out with Dr. Erin Kasparik this morning, which is the time that we're chatting, but this may be <laughs> loaded at a different time. So anyway, uh, we're, we're just trying to get videos out of all the docs at Somerset and practitioners. So everybody gets to know uh, all of us a little bit better. Hi, Dr. Erin. Hi, Candice, how are you? Oh, I'm, I'm good, how are you? I'm doing well. Good. So why don't we start by just having you tell us a little bit about yourself and the things you like to do, uh, just kind of in general, get to know you a bit better. Sure. Um, so I'm a naturopathic doctor in terms of my job. <laughs> in terms of, I mean, I'm from Ottawa. I grew up here. I went to Guelph and then uh, CCNM for naturopathic school, and then I decided to move back. Um, and yeah, in my free time, I love the season change. So in the summer, I like to cycle and swim and spend time at the cottage. In the winter, I like to ski and be outside and shovel, <laughs> you know. And so that's, I mean, people complain about Ottawa, but that's, I think, the one thing we have going for us is yeah. variety. Yeah, for sure. The changes of season bring different activities. So I think part of the part of the um, way to get through it is just to embrace what what it has to offer, I guess. So exactly. And you take that. Yeah. What's the gift in this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you've taken up skate skiing. Have you been out much? Oh my gosh. So I tried and then I wiped out big time. Like the second time out, I went too big. So I was out for like a month and then I've been back, but I'm getting like my, it's like I have sea legs. I'm nervous yeah, <laughs> to fair. fall again. Yeah. And so I, yeah, I'm going, but I'm learning. It's yeah. So fun. It's so fun. Yeah. I've seen some big wipeouts on the S jam. Yeah. <laughs> skate skiers, because you can go so fast. It's amazing. That's the bonus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, classic paint's also like great, but yeah. Yeah. Yes, which is what I do, but I want to try skate skiing someday, maybe, maybe next year when there's skis available in the world again. True. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about your practice and the things that you see and maybe some of the, the things that get you the most excited about. Uh, That's a good question. Thanks for asking. Um, my practice is a family, family medicine practice. Um, and because our clinic's downtown, I think we see a lot of like wellness-based mm -hmm. patients, um, people who feel like relatively well, they just, they feel tired or they're sleep deprived or they're stressed and it's impacting their body. And so that's sort of the main client base, but I started practicing in a clinic where there was a lot of pregnancy, a lot of fertility, and then a lot of babies. And I had, a, I have some extra like pediatric training. So that, that was the core of my practice for maybe the first four or five years. And that's a very fun group to treat because they're, again, pretty well and are really just looking to up level. And, and you know, if we see babies from the get go, mm -hmm. it's like you nip the problems so quickly and they get better like so <laughs> easily that they just like grow without all the baggage that the rest of us accumulate. Yeah, so that's really rewarding. Um, and, and I think at Somerset, my biggest sort of client base is women who are planners, it's like women who want to get pregnant in four years, mm -hmm. really want their cycles to be on track. They want their nutrient status to be optimal. They want to be feeling like really good in their body and in their life so that they're like ready. <laughs> and so that's like the preconception care model. It's like optimize your health so that when you want to maybe conceive, you can, you know, and ideally it's like speedy, speedy, although a little bit of that is out of control. <laughs> if we had the answers or all the all the questions for the body that would be great but we don't mm -hmm. but I love that that optimizing wellness piece you know and that that sort of carries through I think for a lot of the patients that we see into this like you know they come you know there's a specific concern but then also you know the the carry through the to have the best health that you can all through your life which is that's that's the amazing piece is that 
that really helps when you have good baseline health when as things come up you're just so much more capable to to move through those things so to move through exactly and to sort of not think about it like to not think when you're in a meeting like oh my stomach <laughs> or yeah. or yeah. to not think oh my gosh today's going to be another like exhausted day how am I going to get through like mm -hmm. in a perfect world it's like when you're living your life you're not really thinking about your health <laughs> yes that's right. exactly it yeah, yeah. totally I, I'm 100% mm -hmm. agree that if we could get patients to the point where it's not even part of their their daily thought process where they're just feeling that good that's that's the ticket I think for sure mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now tell us what is something that maybe the patients don't know about you we had a little chit chat about uh some EMF stuff earlier on. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, this is my secret. So maybe <laughs> sharing it to the world. I know like two, two years ago, three years ago, I did an intensive sort of, you know, bioregulatory medicine training outside Seattle with um, Dr. Klinghart, who's like a bit of a wacky medical doctor, <laughs> German trained. He's amazing. And he thinks really outside the box, treats a lot of like Lyme disease and autism. And um, there was an exhibitor there who had something called like an EMF kill switch and it hooks into your electrical panel and then at night there's like a little remote and so I just push like two buttons and it turns off all the electrical um, in and around my bedroom and the, the circuits around the TV and the Wi-Fi um, and anything that like as we know like currents or ungrounded currents like create electric fields and it's you know termed electromagnetic whatever <laughs> electromagnetic pollution electromagnetic <laughs> exposure emfs uh mm -hmm. and so that's my like secret i mean unless you see my electrical panel you don't know <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and, and i know it's talk it's about been, it very much but i sleep yeah. like a baby it's like sleeping in the woods yes mm -hmm. i think that there i mean there's definitely something to it for sure i mean there's um I had a patient whose job was to sort of go look at these these big electrical towers and stuff and they were little little badge things that that talk about kind of where they're at in terms of the, the frequency and the the um, the EMFs with that so I mean if that's kind of standard of care in the conventional world for for these these cell towers and everything your, else then exactly if that's your occupation and you're guarding yourself against it mm -hmm. then be. yeah then that's I mean it's, it's a great idea to do it in our own homes for mm -hmm. sure. And I think there's some evidence coming out now for sure on, on all of the, uh, the kind of electrical things. I think that they use the term dirty electricity and, yeah. and um, Wi-Fi and all that stuff having impact on health. So I think it used to sound a bit more wacky now, but it's becoming more mainstream, I think for sure. So it's a, it's, it's a nice thing for people invisible. to know. You it know, is like it's invisible yeah. and so it's not something that you really think about in terms of like a, a stressor on the body but yeah like yeah potentially yeah. a thing and like i feel a difference so i'm mm -hmm. gonna continue to use it but yeah yeah kind amazing now what what's hidden in the back of your pantry i chocolate yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Some> baking chocolate <laughs> Me too. In desperate times, I will eat the baker's chocolate too, or the yeah. chipettes as well. But yeah, yeah <laughs> I know. that's my that's my go to as well. Chocolate, mm -hmm. a little bit every day. But you know, there's some health benefits. Not the worst. So, yeah. yeah, could be worse for sure. Mm -hmm. Could be worse. You could be telling everybody you eat chunks of butter every day, which <laughs> also not that bad, Candice. <laughs> also, could be, yeah, it could be worse too. Could be worse. I'm trying to think of like strange things I've seen people eat but butter oak is okay too yeah yeah so I guess we're not doing so bad then if those are the only things we could think of uh now any favorite podcasts or books you're reading I'm always reading like six books at a time um I don't even know. That's like probably not interesting to anyone else, but I'm really he healing Lyme by Stephen Buhner. It's all about like herbal medicine and treating like tick-borne illnesses. I'm reading um, a mindset book. I'm reading <laughs> a sort of biological medicine <laughs> it's a philosophy book, you know, 
Mm-hmm. And just I'm, your, oh, I'm your average everyday kind just of the average. <laughs> but I am, I'm really into women who run with the wolves. Like maybe I'm late to the party on this one, but it's so good. Like all the stories about the female archetypes and like mm-hmm. the wild woman. And this is the best part. Like the whole analogy is that like wild women are like wolves. Like the wolf is like a sol- solitary animal. Mm-hmm. And they have like their intuition and their instincts and they follow like their gut. Um, and then they have a collective that like supports them, that helps them feel safe, that they need for social. And it's like this perfect analogy for humans, I think, especially women. Um, but yeah, that's it's such a good one. That's a good segue into the Wild Collective, which you are running. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. So you know, the practice model for naturopathic doctors is one-on-one. Like a patient has a health problem, they come in, we do an assessment, give them some tips, they go home, do them. Ideally, they feel better. And it's like a relatively quick process, right? Like three visits and usually patients are feeling significantly more on their feet. Mm-hmm. Um, and I find I'm always like rushing to say like everything I know, I'm trying to like download onto my patient. <laughs> So I'm like, you know, speed talking through the menstrual cycle or like how the digestive system works or what a probiotic is, you know, like the basic stuff. And, uh, and so I've decided to run a group program that's 10 weeks and it's virtual at this point. Um, And it's just for women and it's a curriculum, like a women's health curriculum. So essentially what maybe would be would have been nice to learn in health class in high school yeah <laughs> like how there's a whole week on detox there's a whole week on digestion there's a whole week on like the moon cycle and how with women's rhythms mm. work and and it's a more affordable like delivery method but it's also an opportunity for women to ask their questions in a group where like we all kind of have the same mm-hmm. <laughs> the same physiology and so uh i think i think it's a really like efficient fun way way of delivering health information and it's like the time that we need that we don't get one-on-one yeah and Mm -hmm. it's so true and I think especially for women I feel like we this is my own kind of (laughs) hill to die on I guess (laughs) I feel like women in healthcare really we have not been given the voice we deserve or even the education Mm -hmm. around health and what's normal and what's not normal and and uh, so it, it's such an important thing for women to understand kind of how their own physiology works and to have a voice in their own health and health care so it's such a great program to be offering yeah yeah for those yeah. reasons for I sure and then that nail on the head I think yeah right? like if you don't know what to ask how are you supposed to access health care that yeah. is going to help you or where you can make your own decisions and yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's a really great program for, for understanding ourselves and then for, for health advocacy too. So that's, that's amazing. I'm so happy that you're running the program. And it starts in a couple of weeks, hey? So it starts I'll in a couple of weeks. Yeah, we're starting the beginning of March and, um, and it's an evening program. And then I think in the summer, spring, summer, I'll do a daytime program for women who, who maybe don't want to use up an evening or who can take a lunchtime, yeah. um, women who are self-employed. So more like the entrepreneur crowd. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm excited. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great. Um, all right. Any let's let's wrap it up with what's one thing that you do for yourself, self care wise, that's pretty consistent. Oh, that's really consistent. I get enough sleep. Mm-hmm. Good for you. That's the big one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I do not drink enough water. Oh, I think we may be frozen here. Uh, (laughs) We're freezing a little bit. So that's probably a good time to uh, say goodbye and wrap up. Thank you, Dr. Erin, for chatting with me. And um, have a great weekend and rest of your day. Thank you. You too. Enjoy the sun. I hope you get out for a ski. Yes, I think we're planning to skate this morning, regardless of the temperature. So that's phase two of the day. Brave girls. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Okay. Bye, Erin. Bye.